Hi, and welcome to Neighborhood House. I'm Jennifer Nuttall, I'm the Executive Director, and we have a brand new facility that we love to be able to show people what we do here. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we're not gonna be able to have people come in. So we decided to do it a little differently this okay. time. I'm oh. Mary Nichols with KUTV2 News, and I wanna help show them, give them a tour of all the services you have here. So awesome, we're so started. excited to show you. Let's get started. So Neighborhood House was founded in 1894. That was two years before Utah was even a state. And we're so lucky we have a lot of images of our historic buildings and the places that we've been. But one thing that's really important is that we've always been located here on the west side of Salt Lake City, because that's always where there's been the greatest need. And we've grown from a small, you know, one room house to this new 57,000 square foot facility. Well, it used to be just people in the neighborhood. Absolutely. Help yep. in the neighborhood house. And now you serve so many people. We do. And all along this west side corridor is where there's the most need. So we have so many children who are in need of services that are affordable, as well as we have our adult population that you can see here. Adult day services. Adult day services. So imagine uh, you're caretaking for an aging loved one or a disabled adult, and you need to go to work. What do you do with your loved one during the day? You need to be able to have somewhere for them to be that's safe, that's secure, and that's also fun. They, and they get a social benefit from it as well. They get to socialize with each other. They're able to do stimulating activities that work. They're physical, they're emotional, they're cognitive, trying to keep that going um, and just help them live the best quality of life that they can and have a good time during the day. And give their caregivers a little time as well. Exactly. Trained professionals yep. and volunteers. Yes, we have a full staff of trained professionals who come in and they have a curriculum that they follow. So these, in, these are all intentional activities that have a purpose. So in here you'll see we've got our acti one of our activity rooms and we actually have two spaces for people at this point so that we can do different types of activities. That was one of the growth things that we were so happy to be able to add, as well as a craft room. We do a lot of crafts. When there's no COVID, we do a lot of intergenerational art. So we bring in the kids, they get together with the adults and we do music and dancing and then lots of different art projects, which are really fun. Everything's so open and airy, it's, so, it's good for the pandemic. They can space out a little bit now, but you can't serve as many people. Absolutely, we were so uh, pleased with uh, the timing on the new space because for a good six months of 2020, we weren't able to serve our aging adults because of this pandemic. They were too vulnerable of a population. But with this new facility, we were able to be creative and think about how we could keep them socially distanced and help those caregivers because they were really, really hurting. They needed something and having the, them home for that entire time was taking a toll on everybody. Healthcare workers and services, aging services are all tapped out as well. That's right, that's right. So being able to open in this brand new facility was so wonderful. As you can see here, we've got a full kitchen where they do cooking activities. We make it as home-like as possible because we want them to feel at home. This is their family when they're not um, with their family in their homes and we are allowing them to be able to age in place. We want them to, the goal is for them to be able to stay in their homes with their families in the places that they thrive and having neighborhood house during the day is what helps them to be able to do that. Okay. Have fun, interact, get good nutrition. We serve um, breakfast, lunch, and an afternoon snack. And that's all done in the main kitchen, which we'll see later in the mm -hmm. tour. Um, and then this kitchen is used for, as you can see, the fun, the fun things. So yeah, exactly. for the projects, the doing, projects. doing pies and bread and cookies and um, being able to work together as a group to create something. That is fantastic. And then you've had the Children's Center portion open for a while. Yes, we were lucky to open the Children's Center in August of 2019. Um, that was just before the pandemic. It's a big, beautiful building, isn't it? It is a beautiful building, and we really wanted to bring the children and the adults under one roof. Previously, we had separate buildings, and it just created a division that we really didn't want because... You know, Neighborhood House is all about the intergenerational, about the family atmosphere. So we want to bring them together. Here you can see the school age program. This was very fascinating during the pandemic because Salt Lake School District 
didn't go back to school. Right. They stayed online and there were all these kids who didn't have anywhere to go. The, their parents always relied on them being in school for their care. So we opened our after school program to an all day program wow. and our after school professionals turned into full time teachers and it was quite the endeavor and I'm so proud of our staff and for the flexibility that they had because they brought these most vulnerable kids who really had no other options. They, they didn't have anywhere working. they could be. Right into our facility, got them logged onto their computers with our technology, mm -hmm. able to get them into classes that they had online and being able to complete those assignments and do the homework and, and get through their school day, which without Neighborhood House, I don't know how they would have done it. Yeah. So our teachers did an, a fabulous job there. Everybody had to be so resourceful. And yes. Let's make it work. It was all about flexibility and innovation. So we encountered lots of difficulties and we would just talk them through and decide what needs to change here and how can we help these families and these kids the most. And we see they have meals served as Absolutely. well. And now you're looking at some of our preschoolers. Mm -hmm. So we serve kids from as young as 15 months old all the way up through 12 years old. So during the early education, they're always here here all day, right? We're open from 6.30 in the morning till 5.30 at night because we're here for that working parent. Their schedules can be long and arduous and they need somewhere that they know their child is well taken care of, getting to do again, as you can see, the fun mm -hmm. activities. We like to make sure they love to be here. So that's part of it. You can see the kitchen here. That's an impressive kitchen. It is an impressive kitchen and it has to be because they pump out over 100,000 mils a year in wow. that kitchen. And they use fresh produce. They, they do. A lot of things from the community as well. Yes, we have an amazing chef um, who is now also our operations manager who has created really high quality meals and she's very invested in uh, getting things from the local economy. So we're helping with that as well as we do this. This is our gymnasium. It's huge. Make sure we keep up with this video because this is wonderful to see this space. A lot of space. We have and a few different rooms. You have the tech room and you have yep. the classrooms. So all on the children's side, the, the spaces that we were able to add that we were so fortunate is having a STEM lab. So we're able to go in there and do lots of fun experiments. It's all set up for them to do cooking, to do measuring, uh, to learn as they're having fun, and to be able to do all these fun science experiments because you see this population does not get the enrichment that uh, they need to be able to excel in those fields. So Neighborhood House makes sure that we keep them right on top of the latest things. We have all the STEM uh, support from the community to bring those programming into our uh, facility and we have a wonderful new space for it. We also have a studio and that space is really great for movement. So getting the kids into the studio when it's maybe really poor weather outside and they're able to do, we've had yoga in there. They do Tai Chi and do different kinds of fun body movement things to keep their wellness and health going. It's just an incredible community center. It really is. One of the things we were really excited to be able to add because we'd seen for years how much we needed it, we just didn't have the space, was the family support program. Because, you know, the, the families that come in, they have multiple issues that are going on and we can help them with the daycare and we can make sure they have a sliding fee scale and get their, their children and their adults into great services. But you see that there's a lot of wraparound needs. Yeah, so what happens when they go home. Exactly. And they don't have access to a lot of different basic needs for them to be successful. So through the institution of the family support program, we were able to bring on a case manager who meets with any of our clients that are having that are in crisis in any way and then connects them to the resources that they need to stabilize their family. And a couple of the on-site things that we're able to do through that are we're able to have a neighborhood pantry, which we get donations through the food bank and other local uh, organizations. And then people can come in and pick up food anytime that they're here. You know, they're dropping off their kids and their adults. They're here twice a day. Mm -hmm. So it gives them a very convenient and easy way just to grab some food while they're here and then take that home with them so that they have something to eat. Because that's a, the food insecurity is really a big issue that's just been made even worse with this pandemic. Right. So we have that. We also have the neighborhood closet, which is where they can go to get boots and coats and shoes and anything like that that they need for their kids or for their household. Mm -hmm. And those are gently used items. And sometimes we also have new items that are donated that they can just come and get for free. 
and take those home with them. So what a great service. Yeah, caring for their basic needs and making sure that they don't go without on the very important things so that they then are able to come to school and be able to learn and, and be able to engage and feel like they can um, really succeed as families. We also have a pretty extensive library resource. We do. We have a really beautiful space in our new library that, again, was an addition with this new, uh, bigger facility. And we really use that because reading is such a big part of what we do here. And just getting kids to be comfortable and excited about books is a huge part of uh, success later on in their academic they years. might not have that opportunity at home. And you see in the lower income families that they just don't have book rich environments. And so we're able to bring them into our library. They can come in and read with the aging adults. So we do have that intergenerational piece. And then we have the library is set up so that the teachers can also utilize it in the classrooms based on whatever subject they're talking about. So if it's around dinosaurs or if it's around outer space or whatever the subject is, they can come in, exchange the books that are in the kids' classrooms for what the topic is that they're currently working on. So that makes it really fun for the kids. So great resource. And it's such a beautiful and fun space for them to be in together. And we know that a lot of reading is also directly connected to technology. Exactly. And I'm so glad you brought that up because we really focus on digital inclusion. And that's become um, a buzzword lately because you have to have technology. You have to have access to it to do anything. Even to be a school child, you gotta be able to get online now, right? right? And uh, the families that we serve most often only have internet connection on their phones. So that doesn't work for applying for jobs, for accessing applications for other community resources and not for their kids who have to get online and do their school work. So we are so fortunate that we've had the support from uh, the foundations in the community as well as from Comcast that we have a cyber center where anyone in our neighborhood can come in and get online. They can print out things that they need to and uh, complete applications. And then we also have laptops for the kids. So when they come in, they know how to get online, how to do the things they need to do for school. There's portals that the parents can get on to see how their kids are doing in school. And really just providing that wraparound service that's so vital for these families to keep moving up the economic ladder. We really are taking care of the whole family. That's right. And the community. Absolutely. Okay, so Neighborhood House serves approximately 400 children every year and over a hundred adults. And we have so many services that we didn't even have a chance to get to today. Huge gyms and classrooms and you do transportation. Yes, door-to-door well. -door transportation for the adults. And we take our school age kids to and from school every day. Walking by the food donations. And <laughs> exactly. Everything that you provide and you're still planning for the future. That's right. And we know there's gonna be a lot of growth because during COVID we've seen the need rise dramatically, but yet haven't been able to expand to meet it just yet. So as people are getting the vaccine um, and as we move forward, we're hoping that we'll be able to really fill this building with the capacity that it has to serve this community. Already so many amazing services. I wish you could get a tour. Hope you can learn more about this. NHUtah.org is the website. They have everything listed, all the services they provide, any questions you might have, they have the answers on the website. Jennifer, thanks so much. Thank you for coming. And we can't wait till you can come in person and we'll give you a tour as well.